Tonight on DC News Now at 10, time is ticking down for summer vacations. Students in the district gearing up for classes to start. But even if your family is ready to return, officials worry the schools may not be ready themselves. We're live the latest in the serious safety concerns just ahead. Also, another alarming attack on a delivery driver. This happening on the heels of a separate similar attack. Full details on the troubling trend in just a moment. Plus, a full-scale emergency exercise planned in preparation for the Silver Line extension. More than 100 first responders taking part. We'll show you in a live report how tomorrow's training is aimed to improve your commute and keep you safe. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Janessa Webb. What a beautiful day across the DMV. Finally, the clouds splitting apart. And you know what? It looks like deja vu weather-wise across the area tomorrow. We'll take a look at that forecast. That's all coming up. Hey, good evening. Thanks for joining us on DC News Now at 10 on DCW 50. I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Thismeen Mafu. our top story tonight. Students in the district head back to school in less than two weeks. And while parents may be getting their kids ready, some city officials worry school buildings won't be prepared. Marielle Carbone is covering this for us tonight. Yeah, Marielle, a big problem. A lot of schools is air conditioning. Yeah, that's right. And here at McFarland Middle School, several classrooms spanning from the boys' locker room to the cafeteria all have work orders in that are open right now for their HVAC cooling systems, meaning they're not working. And this school here, it is not the only one that has problems like this. It is why the district's Department of General Services is getting some backlash tonight from city leaders. It's almost back to school time in the district, but some schools are more or less ready for students and staff to return. Some are far from ready. Council member at large Robert White is one of several district leaders touring DC public schools ahead of the August 29th start date. What he's seeing HVAC issues, leak issues, electrical issues, and in, in addition to a number of minor issues. These photos are from inside Henley Elementary School and show a leak in the boiler room and a broken toilet. Other council members, including Elisa Silverman and Janice Lewis George shared similar photos from school tours, like these posts on Twitter from McFarland Middle School. I'm concerned about whether or not uh, the Department of General Services will be able to fix all of the outstanding issues, especially the major ones, before students and, and teachers return. According to the DGS's HVAC dashboard, more than 100 of the 117 school facilities have open work orders, which range from cooling issues to heating or service issues. And while some schools may only have one work order in one classroom open, others like Deal Middle School have more than a dozen open. I think we saw the worst case scenario last year, and my hope is that we don't see a repeat of that. There were a significant number of schools across the city that didn't have working HVAC, so students and staff were insanely hot uh, and uncomfortable. We reached out to DGS for comment and questions about why some work orders will take so long to fix, but did not hear back. And many of these work orders that we're seeing in our school visits are work orders that have been open months and sometimes years. There's no excuse for that. And White says that DGS was supposed to come out on one of his tours with him today. The agency did not end up doing that, which he calls disappointing. But he does say that next week he's supposed to meet with the agency as well as members from D.C. public schools to talk about where some of these work orders stand and what the status is. And Marielle, you also talked to parents and this isn't the only issue. There are others as well. Yeah, in fact, I was talking to parents in several neighborhoods and they were saying what's more of a concern than some of the facility issues is things like vaccinations and the requirement to have the COVID-19 vaccine. Another parent was also telling me safety is a bigger concern. They want to know that when their child is walking to or from school that they're not going to be shot or harmed with any of the other violence that we're seeing right now in the city. So that's where their heads are at tonight. All right, Marianne, thank you. So later this week, you can have your voices heard. You can join D.C. Public School Chancellor Louis Freeby and DCPS leaders for a back to school town hall. It's happening this Thursday, starting at 5 p.m. over Facebook Live. Now, you are asked to register in advance, so make sure you do that. And leaders will address important updates on things like student vaccines, 
health and safety, attendance, and more. All right, let's get a first check on the forecast with DC News Now Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. And Janessa, tomorrow will be another beautiful day for all those kids who enjoy before they have to head back to school. Yeah, it's for the kiddos. You know, they deserve this before they make that trek into the next school year. I'm providing a good dose of sunshine, and I hope everyone gets outside and they're able to enjoy this because you have limited clouds and you have high pressure that's going to continue to build and just dish this abundance of sunshine that will take over the DMV. So our satellite composite radar zero activity right now and so that's wonderful news even the clouds they're very limited so it's a struggle for me to even say partly cloudy because a lot of clearing is currently taking place just a few clouds across the beltway temperatures in the mid uh, 70s take note of this sunrise 6 23 a.m for my early morning risers we are losing daylight uh, fairly quickly now our dew points they are not an issue they will continue to be very stagnant for the next two days. It's really Friday you start to notice a, a difference in the humidity levels as it feels a slightly bit more tropical. Now, right now our temperatures are all over the place. You can see their lower 60s. We're going to have a few spots mid 50s for overnight lows across the district. Ivy City, eastern locations, northwest DC, 75 degrees out towards uh, even Waldorf. You're slightly cooler and I'm thinking it's because you have the Potomac you have an onshore breeze that continues to make its way in, so slightly cooler, but Lexington Park uh, currently at 73. Temperatures, they will be consistent for the rest of the week. We'll hover in the mid to upper 80s, but that also comes with a slight moisture. We'll look at that coming up, guys. Thanks, Janessa. I'm developing this evening. For those of you in Loudoun County, listen up. You might have a different wake-up call tomorrow morning. That's right. If you live around the soon-to-open Ashburn Metro stop, be ready for loud sirens and a lot of flashing lights. Max Marcilla covers Northern Virginia for us and joins us live from that Metro stop. Yeah, and Max, this is all regularly scheduled, and there's really no cause for concern. That's right, it might raise some eyebrows if it were out of the ordinary, but no, this is exactly what's supposed to happen. Tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, you will see tons of first responders, police crews coming here to the, as you said, soon to open Metro stop here in Ashburn for a standard emergency preparedness drill. Now this is because the Metro stop is set to open sometime in the fall, but Wamada says tomorrow what you will see is more than 100 fire and emergency personnel from several agencies, including the Metro Transit Police, uh, both Fairfax and Loudoun County, and the Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority. The, of course, that's the group that transferred access of the Silver Line expans expansion to Metro this past June, allowing drills like this one to move ahead uh, because it is one of the last steps before the expansion opens. But again, this is just a drill, and WMATA wants to warn you, you might see some sirens, you might hear some sirens, but it is all standard. No need to worry. Again, this is coming as the uh, e expansion of the Silver Line is set to open in the fall. We actually talked to a couple of people who live nearby who have been saying they have been waiting for this for what feels like forever. This has been a project that we're all, we've all been looking forward to for years and years. Um, I think we're all really excited to have such accessibility to DC because it is such um, a really cool and enriching city. And as uh, mentioned earlier, this stop is not open yet, so it will not affect uh, any commuters since the metro is not running here just yet. Fall 2022, that's as much detail as we've gotten. We still don't have a hard date, but um, something we'll be sure to keep you updated on uh, when this uh, Silver Line expansion goes from idea to project and eventually to reality. Reporting live tonight in Ashburn, Max Marcilla, DC News Now. All right, Max, thanks and help a lot of people out there. Now to a crime alert. Two people injured after a double shooting today in Columbia Heights. That's in Northwest DC. Police are looking for an SUV that may be connected. A shooting happened at 145th and Fairmont Streets. Both victims were told are expected to survive. Our in question is a black Toyota Highlander with tinted windows. You've seen it driving around. Call Metro Police. And new tonight, police are looking for the person who robbed a U.S. postal worker in Montgomery County, Maryland. It's just the latest in a string of similar crimes all across the DMV. Cheyenne Corn talked to worried neighbors. I'm sure he did not go out. She did not go out that day saying, oh, someone's going to rob me at Knife Point. 
in the middle of the day, someone with a knife robbed a postal worker in this Chevy Chase neighborhood. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service says only the carrier's personal items were taken and no USPS property or mail. My heart goes out to the mail carriers. Uh, there's such dedicated people working in the heat and you know, the cold, so uh, it's it's really horrible. Reed Dewey says he's unfortunately not surprised this happened because he's had mail dropped at the post office stolen from him once before. Someone had actually gone in and taken a check that was for like $40 and somehow they erased it and they put in this amount of money. But this isn't something that's only happening here in Montgomery County. In recent months, mail carriers have also been targeted right next door in the district and also Prince George's County. Despite the trend, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service says it does not appear that this robbery is related to past recent incidents. Reporting in Montgomery County, Maryland, I'm Cheyenne Karen for DC News Now.